No, I think so. I've learned that. <laughs> well done. Come on, sure. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're thinking of um, who, who likes drinking tea and who likes drinking coffee? Tea. Yes. So tea, do you need sugar? <laughs> yeah. Do you need sugar to put in your tea or coffee? Yeah. yeah. Why do you put sugar in? Sweet. To make it sweeter, don't you? Yeah. To change the consistency or the flavour of it, don't you? Yeah. You know, who likes salt and vinegar on the chips? Yeah. <laughs> or tomato ketchup. Yeah. Why do we do that? We do it because we want it to change. We want it to taste different. We want something to change. And uh, God wants to talk to us tonight about what we put into our lives yes. and how it changes us. Mm. Okay, because it can change us for yes, the right. good or for the bad. And I'm going to start with a verse from Deuteronomy, the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 26, well two verses. And, and really what had happened is God rescued the Israelites, the people of Israel, he rescued them out of slavery, out of prison. We know what it's like to be in prison, don't we? Yeah. yeah, you do know. You yeah. do know. We all do. We've all been in prison, whether it's addiction to drugs, alcohol, a pornography, fear. It doesn't matter. We all know what it's like to be in prison. There's nobody in this room doesn't know what it's like to be in prison. It's a anxiousness, no. jealousy, yeah. depression. Yeah. The list is endless and we can feel trapped like we're in a prison. Mm. And God... Uh, recognized that the Israelites, they were trapped in the prison of Egypt because they were slaves and they were being beaten and they were being punished. But they cried out to God because many years before, God gave them a promise. <coughs> he said, I'm going to be your God. And so they called on that promise, God, where are you? And God heard them and he decided to rescue them. So he brought them out. And, uh, and Moses wrote, this, uh, wrote these words down and, and he spoke to them. He said in verse 26 of Deuteronomy 11, and Moses was the leader. He said, see, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. Yes. Who wants to be blessed? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Who wants to be cursed? No. None of us want to be cursed. But we can curse ourselves. Yes. And we can bless ourselves by how we let this thing affect us and rule us. Yeah. So he said, I'm setting before you a blessing. And verse 27 is this. The blessing is if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. So that's the blessing, okay? So I don't know about you, but if you want to be blessed, and the Israelite people wanted to be blessed, the way they'd be blessed is to obey the commands of the Lord their God. Amen. And then he said, uh, but the curse is this. If you disobey the commands of the Lord your God, and turn from the way that I command you today by following other gods, by following other ways which you have not known. I wonder, uh, and, and I've never, I've not, I've never been on drugs. I've never really taken drugs other than the painkiller, so I don't know really what it's like, like cocaine and these other drugs that you know, heroin, etc. But had you known what cocaine or heroin would have done to you, would you have gone down that road? Would you? You wouldn't, would you? I don't think you would. Or alcohol, drinking too much alcohol, or whatever it is that's enslaved you, would you have gone down that road? No. If you'd have known the way it could. No. It's a curse. Yes. And it's cursed your life because it stopped you from living and it's trapped you in a prison. And God wants to show us how we can be set free. Yeah. I don't yeah. know about you, but I'm, yeah. I'm up for being set free. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like a... <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. It's kind of like, um, get out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> get out of jail. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we, in fact, we heard last week, didn't we, that Jesus can step inside a room where the doors are locked. Yeah. Yes. That's you remember right. that? Yeah. Jesus can step inside a room. So, Mark chapter 7 says this. Now, the, now Jesus has been doing many, many things. So, Jesus, the Son of God, and he came down as God in flesh, God in skin. To show us that God exists. To show us that God cares. To show us that God wants to, us to break free from prison. Amen. And doesn't Amen. want us to live cursed, but wants us to live a blessed yes. life. Follow Jesus. Amen. Trust in Jesus. Enable Jesus to, like sugar sweetens tea, let Jesus sweeten your life. Yes. Let Jesus yes. sweeten. Yes. And, and, and when you do that, you'll be blessed. 
It's the truth. You'll be blessed. Uh, but so Jesus had been doing many, many of these amazing miracles, and wherever he went, crowds came, and he healed everyone that were brought to him. But the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they had a problem with that. Mm. Well, we don't do that. You're not supposed to do that. And, the, and in, verse, in Mark chapter 7, verse 1, it said, The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem, they gathered around Jesus, and they were constantly looking for something to have a go at him, to pull him upon, constantly. And he said, and what they, they saw some of his disciples eating food with the hands without washing them. Are we eating food without washing your hands? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are. Yeah. 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 All, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and so the Pharisees saw him. They were, washed, they were eating food uh, that, uh, with hands that were defiled, and that is, they weren't washed. And he said, and the Pharisees and the Jews, they don't eat unless they give their hands a good washing. <laughs> And they had, they had this problem. And they were holding, this was a tradition of the elders. But when they came from the marketplace, they don't eat unless they wash. They would not eat unless they washed their hands. And, and they saw the disciples eating without washing their hands. And so they were really concerned about this. So in verse 5, it said, the Pharisees said to Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders? Instead of eating their food with dirty hands, why don't they wash their hands? Such was, see, they were trying to, they were clutching at straws, they were desperate to try and stop Jesus. Why did they, why did they eat? And, and I love, I love the fact that Jesus, he, he, he goes on, you can read in, in Mark 7, and he has a long conversation with the religious leaders that they caught in religion. Yes, yeah, that's right. They, they caught in the laws of man and not God. And so, it's brilliant to this because in Mark chapter 8, it says, During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples and said, Listen, I've got compassion for these people. They've already been with me three days and they've nothing to eat. Yeah. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples said, Well, where are we going to get enough food for all these people? Where, where, where are we going to do that? All the, the shops are closed, he said. What are we going to do? How can we feed them? So Jesus said, how many loaves do you have? And, Jesus, and, and they, they said, we've got seven loaves. So he told all the crowd to sit down. Okay, sit down. He took the seven loaves, gave thanks, brought them and distributed to the disciples who gave them to the crowd. And they did so. They also had some small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to dr distribute them. This was... The seven loaves and a few fish. Okay? Seven loaves and a few fish. 4,000 people. Do you think they all washed their hands? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they all washed their hands? Can you see Jesus? He's like, it's almost like saying, watch this. <laughs> They're not interested in washing their hands. They're interested in food. Yeah. Three days they've been with Jesus. Nothing to eat. Now, I don't know about you. If I had nothing to eat, for three days, I won't be thinking about washing my hands if there were a sandwich there, would you? <laughs> <laughs> or a piece of toast. I wouldn't be thinking about that. And I love this, like Jesus said, watch this. God says, just watch this. 4,000, not washed hands, what are we going to do now? <laughs> I think it's, it's great that God just speaks, speaks to him. And so uh, it said, verse 11, so there were 4,000 of them. And, uh, and sent them all the way. And then verse 11, the Pharisees came and began to question Jesus again. And they asked him, they said, send us a sign from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so 4,000 people have just been fed. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't wash their hands, so that don't count. <laughs> <laughs> send us a sign from heaven. Oh. Send us a sign. Come on. So Jesus sang. <laughs> For goodness sake. <laughs> you can imagine Jesus thinking, oh. Why does this generation ask for a sign? Yes. Why do they ask for it? Truly I tell you, no sign will be given to it. No sign. Then he left them, got back in the boat, and he crossed to the other side. So now he's going across, uh, and he's in a boat, and in verse 14 of Mark 8, it says, the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread. Probably all the 4,000 people, at most of them. <laughs> Well, they forgot to bring any bread, except for one loaf that they had with them in the bowl. And Jesus says this, he said, be careful, Jesus warned them, watch out for the yeast 
of the Pharisees and that of Herod. What is the yeast of the Pharisees? The yeast of the Pharisees is their religious, their religious thinking, their religious ways, their inability to change or to move. Religion. Yeah. Yeah. Religion. God's not interested in religion. He's interested in relationship. Amen. This is what God's interested in. I said, watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees. So who knows, when you put yeast in a batch of dough, what does it do? It makes the bread rise. rise. The yeast makes a difference. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The sugar makes a difference. The tomato ketchup makes a difference. Yeah. God Amen. wants us to understand that things that we use in life will make a difference. Can you think it above tomato ketchup, above sugar, Above yeast, but higher, yeah. to a higher level, yeah. to the anointing of Jesus Christ yeah. and the Holy Spirit, who is poured out. Jesus said, is anyone thirsty? Let him come to me and drink. Amen. Anybody thirsty? Jesus said, T- God said, taste and see that I am God, taste and see. Taste and see. Unless you've never dipped your chip in tomato ketchup and tasted it, you've never known it would be like again. Yes, I know, that's right. It's true. That's right. uh, if you'd never put sugar in your tea, you wouldn't know what it would like. But once you do that, taste and see, and God says, it's the same with Christianity, it's the same with walking God, with God. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. If anyone, anyone comes to me, anybody, anybody, maybe you need to come to Jesus tonight. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees. Are you on the blessed road or are you on the cursed road? The cursed road is the yeast of the Pharisees. Notice they linked it with Herod. Herod was a nasty man. He wasn't a nice king, wasn't Herod. He wouldn't think twice about putting people to death. He was angry. He was full of himself as Herod. And so they started to discuss the disciples, discussing one another. They said, is it because we have no bread? Is it because we have no bread? <coughs> and he said, Jesus is aware of the discussion. He said, he said to him, why are you talking about having no bread? You know why he said that? Because he was in the boat. Yeah. Jesus is the bread yes. from heaven. Yes. Yes. Did you know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem? Yeah. Did you yeah. know that Bethlehem is called the house of bread? Yeah. Did you know that Jesus is the bread from heaven? Mm. Born in the house of bread. Amen. That the 4,000 people had bread. Jesus is trying to show us something that every single person, no matter how many they are, there are, can have a part of Jesus. That Jesus can be a part of their life if we'll just open the door and invite him in. He said, why are you still talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Don't you understand what I'm trying to do here, guys? Can you not see it? And Jesus is trying to, he's trying to bring in the, the new promises of God that are outside the law, outside of religion, outside the box. Religion will box you in. Yeah. Yes. If you want to live in a religious box, Go ahead. carry on. Yeah. Who wants to break out the box? Oh, I want to yes. break out the box of religion <laughs> and into the relationship of God. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. trusting in Jesus, yes. knowing that my sins yes. are forgiven, knowing that the guilt and shame that I carried, listen, I'm as light as a feather, mate. Yeah. There's no weight of guilt or shame or depression or frustration on my shoulders. Hallelujah. There's none. Yeah. Oh, There's no pressure. I have a business. I have no pressure. People say, I've, I've done it for so many years. I'll tell you, I just give it to God. Yeah. Yeah. Just give it to Jesus. I invited Jesus Christ into my life. I read the scripture in Revelation 3.20 which says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. If any man or woman open the door, I'll come in and eat with him and him with me. I read that and that's what I did. And my life would change. And I'll tell you something now, 30 something years later, I have a business, business started in 1986, still in business, still trusted in God. Amen. Every day. Yeah. Because it wouldn't happen without God. Yeah. Our Queen served for 70 years. It would be impossible to do that without God. Amen. She was yeah. born again. Hallelujah. I am born again. Yes. You too can be born again. Yeah. Amen. To any, tonight, if you want to be. 
You can be born again. You can be born again. Hallelujah. He said, you're still not here. What are you talking about? Are your hearts hardened? You know, a, a hard heart will not find Jesus. A hard heart, a stubborn attitude, wrong thinking will not lead you to Jesus. You have to lay it all down and you have to say, Lord Jesus, I don't really understand, but I believe in the promises. I believe yeah. in the promises. He said, do you have eyes but fail to see, ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember when I brought the five loaves for the 5,000? You see, there were 5,000. Remember, you might think I've got it wrong or the Bible's wrong. He's going to tell us now. Did, did, when I brought the five loaves for the 5,000, how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up? Twelve, they said. And when I brought the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many baskets of pieces did you bring up? They answered, seven. He said, do you still not understand what is he saying what is he saying he's saying that there's enough bread that has come down from heaven for everybody for the whole world for everyone in peter's letter peter said that god is not slow as we understand slowness he doesn't want anyone to perish but everyone to come to the saving knowledge of jesus christ this is our god and jesus has shown him by example that but look, do you still not understand? Never mind the yeast of the Pharisees. That'll cause you nothing but trouble. Never mind that. Never mind the walking down the road that leads to curse. Walk around the road that leads to blessings. There's a scripture up here that says, John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You know, if you walk in darkness... You walk in the path of curses. Yes. If you walk in light, you're walking on the path of blessing. Amen. And God is the one. God is the one that lays that before us this evening. I wonder, do you want to be blessed? Yeah. Do you want to be blessed? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be forgiven? Do you want to be set free? And it, listen, we're all going to get it wrong. You'll get it wrong. It might be you could give your life tonight to Jesus and go great for three weeks. And then, bang, you can fall. Yeah. But you know what? The thing about Jesus is, is come on. The lead's like, take your hand, come back up. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows that's true? Yeah. We all know it's true. Anybody who's born again and filled with the Spirit of God and trusts in Jesus knows that's true. But the, the focus of our lives is not to fall it's to try and avoid fail, falling. But when we fall and when we fail, we know that God can pick us back up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. I don't know where you are tonight. I don't know if you want picking up, lifting up by the hand of Jesus. I don't know if you want your sins to be forgiven. I don't even know if you want healing. I believe that God will heal, will set free, yeah. will transform anybody's Amen. life. Yes. If you would only believe. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you would only believe. This is what our God wants to do. Hallelujah. He's an amazing God. And then we'll look at this, and I'll finish with this story, because this is in Mark 8. In Mark 8, verse 22, he said, after, after this conversation, and they get out of the boat, he said, they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. So he's blind. Do you know, before you're born again, we're blind. Yeah. We walk in darkness. And we can't see. One touch from the king. Amen. One touch. And you'll be able to see. Yes. He said Jesus touched him. Hallelujah. Begged him. Jesus, will you please touch him? So Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. He said he spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him. And Jesus asked him, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes and his eyes were open. His sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Don't even go back into the village. Jesus took him by the hand out of the village, yeah. outside the village. He spit and he put it on the man's eyes and he, can you see anything? Men looking like trees. For some of us, and our journey with God 
It's a, it's a slow process. Mm. And sometimes we don't always see clearly. I don't know about you, but I was so I didn't really see really that clearly in the beginning. No. But as as I turned my life over to Jesus again, Lord Jesus, I need another touch from you, Jesus. I don't just see that yes. clearly. Yes. And Jesus right. just gives you another touch right. yeah. and opens right. your eyes and you right. see clearly. And when you see clearly, it causes you to understand. Then Jesus says, Don't go back into the village. Why not go back in the village? Because he was blind in the village. Yeah, yes, that's right. And and what the village represents your life, where you are, before you find Jesus. I was blind before I met Jesus. I was blind, I was ignorant, I was selfish, I was addicted, I was lost. And God took me by the hand. And he led me out of that village of addiction, of blindness, mm. of anger. Anger. Yes, that's right, Peter. Anybody angry? That's right, I used to be so angry. That's right. Anybody get angry? Yeah. Angry. Yeah. You know in Galatians chapter 5 it says that yeah. anger yeah. is one of the, it's a sin. Yeah. One of the acts of the sinful nature. There's a list in Galatians 5. Yeah. Anger being one of them. Yeah. Anger. It's what causes the anger to rise in you. And God, He transformed me, set me free from all that, Amen. all that, Amen. and I left the village. Do I go back in the village now and again over the years? Yes, I have, and I got angry, and did I realise where I were? Yes, I did. I thought, oh no, I've blown it. Especially when you're in a business and you forget that God's in charge, and you start to think you're in charge, and then one of your favourite employees does things that you would rather than not, and it causes anger to rise up. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> That's what can happen. That's what can happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Scott works for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. He works with me. He works with me. Yes. Brilliant. Not for me. Yes. We, we work together. We work for God. Amen. The King of Kings. I want to encourage you. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Let God touch you. Taste and see that the Lord is God. I guarantee that you walk the path of being blessed. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Wow. That's good. We don't need don't need many words because we know that when God speaks, something can happen. You know, the, the blessings and curses are in this room here tonight.